who, by the way, Rachel, is not even there. He's nothing. He is without, he is like a walrus snorting <laughs> and like a rhino flopping his hand. It was, he is not there. That was the surprising thing to me. E. Jean Carroll is talking about the $83.3 million defamation verdict that was awarded to her in her defamation trial against Donald Trump there. E. Jean Carroll was describing what she observed about Donald Trump in court. She described him like a walrus who was just sitting there and just behaving so bizarrely. He was a nothing she said. And here in another interview, E. Jean Carroll talks about how Donald Trump just looks so weak, so powerless. Here, play this clip. And there he was, and he was nothing. He was just no power. He had, he was zero. That was, it, I was flabbergasted. And from then we just sailed through. She brought me in. She said, say your name. And I just looked at Robbie, saw he was nothing. And it came out from there. Did you, did you make eye contact with him? Many times. And what was that like? I'm t it, he's an emperor without clothes. It's like looking at nothing. It was like nothing. Were you surprised by that? Because the environment, <laughs> yeah. no, I can imagine, but the environment, not just from what you went through, but also the environment in that courtroom was a yeah. very different, very Ooh. volatile, very heated environment in terms of both uh, Donald Trump's attorney and Donald Trump. For it to end up like that, were you surprised? Yes, yes, I had been prepared for the worst force you know, on the earth today, the most powerful, the most, the most effective, the most money, the richest, the most, you know, you know. And there he is, he's nothing. Why? It's just the people around him who give him the power. Here, Rachel Maddow asks E. Jean Carroll, what would you do if your lawyer said there was another case to file against Donald Trump? Play the clip. E. Jean, in terms of the, um what you've just been through, I mean, to hear a lawyer as experienced as Ravi Kaplan say it was nerve wracking to be in that room sometimes because of the way this was conducted. Um, I have to ask you, you know, President Trump has kept your name out of his mouth since being told he has to pay $83 million to you for what he's done in the past. But over the weekend, he did start posting links online to articles that attacked you and denied your claims. Again, he seems to be pushing it already in terms of whether or not he is going to go back to calling you a liar and denying that he did what he did. Um, if, it, if it came to it, if your lawyers told you that there was another case and that you should go back and get more money out of him and sue him again, would you do it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Here, E. Jean Carroll describes that Donald Trump was there to try to win votes against a woman he sexually assaulted, where E. Jean Carroll was there to try to prevail in the courtroom. Play the clip. So we had two different objectives. Ours was to win a case. His was to win voters. We'll see how that plays out, that he's uh, using me to win voters. Sexual assault, a man found liable for sexual assault is using the woman he sexually assaulted to get votes. Here, E. Jean Carroll, kind of joking and mocking Donald Trump here when asked by Rachel Maddow what she's going to do with the money she's receiving in the verdict. And she's poking Donald Trump here, the whiny loser Donald Trump. And watch her do this joke. It's quite funny. Play this clip. You've talked about using some of Trump's money that you're about to get um, to help shore up women's rights. Do you know what that might be, what that might look yes, like? Yes, Rachel. Or, yes. Tell me. I had such, such great ideas <laughs> for all the good I'm going to do with this money. First thing, Rachel, you and I are going to go shopping. We're going to get completely <laughs> new wardrobes, new shoes, motorcycle for Crowley, new fishing rod for Robbie. Rachel, what do you want? Penthouse? It's yours, Nothing. Rachel. Penthouse and uh, France? You want France? You want to go fishing nope. in France? No? Oh, all right, all right, okay. That's a joke. <laughs> 
<laughs> Although joke. if yeah. if me fishing in France could yeah. do something for women's rights, I would take the hit. You know, I would obviously uh, t- take one for the team. I All right, let me, let me, <laughs> as if, as if you need persuasion in that regard. Here, E. Jean Carroll talks about that she wants to do good with the money she receives from Donald Trump in this verdict against him for his defamatory conduct after being found liable for sexually assaulting her. Play this clip. You may soon, though, have quite a bit of his money. And I wonder how you plan to use that. Oh, it's inspiring. We talk about it a lot. (laughs) We're going to do good with that money. We're going to do... Mary Trump has suggested uh, we turn Trump Tower into an animal sanctuary, for instance. A joke. That was a joke, Poppy. (laughs) Uh, No, but we're we're inspired to uh, do not waste a penny of this. And we have some good ideas that we're working on. Specifically aimed at what would oppose Trump? Well, Donald Trump hates women. Remember the New York Magazine, the famous quote when they said, Don, what do you think of women? He said, women, they're not worth a piece of crap. Remember that quote? And so I think one of the things we could do, seeing as how he's very instrumental in taking away women's rights over their bodies across the United States, maybe we can think about how we can restore women their rights. Hmm. Use a little of money for that. Here, Rachel Maddow asks E. Jean Carroll and her legal team, was Donald Trump well represented in court? What, what can you say about Alina Habba and his lawyering? Play the clip. Maybe rude. So you don't have to answer if you don't want. I'll put this either to Ms. Crowley or Ms. Kaplan if either of you wants to field it. Um, you are both very experienced trial attorneys. You've been up against uh, some of the best and brightest um, opposing counsel and all sorts of different trials. How is President Trump's lawyering uh, is, he, is he well represented in court? I'm going to let Crowley answer that. <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I will say that what you heard just now in that tape of Alina Hava leaving the court and kind of yelling at the reporters, that's what we heard every single day, multiple times during this trial, but yelling at the judge. Mm. And it was unbelievably nerve-wracking <laughs> each time it happened, and it happened multiple times every day. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Thanks for handing that one over to me. Um, (laughs) I think that I think that uh, she had a hard job um, and you could definitely see a difference between her sort of style when he was in the courtroom and when he was not there. Um, She was much more disciplined and frankly acted more like a lawyer when he wasn't there. Um, when he hmm. was, I mean, you could hear him telling her when to object and muttering things and, you know, loudly being frustrated with her. And I think she felt like she had to say things to the judge and to us and sort of put on a performance like you just saw in front of the TV cameras. Yeah. And they're referring to Alina Haba right here. Play this clip. So, I'll, I'll tell you something. Somebody said to me, Alina, would you rather be um, would you rather be smart or pretty? And I said, oh, easy, pretty. I can fake being smart. (laughs) And this was Alina Haba after losing $83.3 million for Donald Trump in the case, saying that uh, the behavior that she observed is going to give rise to a very powerful appeal. It ain't, but watch Alina Haba uh, after she lost the trial. Play the clip. Heard that was made in there and the behavior I saw in there, some of which was reported widely today gave us the most perfect record on appeal, and even if I needed it, which I don't. We were stripped of every defense, every single defense before we walked in there. And I am proud to stand with President Trump because he showed up, he stood up, he took the stand, and he faced this judge. And you know what? I'll continue to do so with him. Here's more of Alina Haba just kind of complaining and whining in Trumpian MAGA fashion. Play this clip. They twisted. We are seeing a violation of our justice system. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not allowed to be stripped of every defense that you have. You are not allowed to be told that you can't bring it up. And imagine a point where a judge tells the lawyer before your client, the former president of the United States, the leading candidate and obvious nominee for the Republican Party, before he takes the stand to defend himself, Ms. Haba, tell me the questions you're going to ask in open court and tell me exactly what he's going to respond. And then edited 
my questions, edited the response he was allowed to give. And guess what my client did? He took the stand. He abided by the rules of this corrupt system that I have seen. We will immediately appeal. We will set aside that ridiculous jury. And I just want to remind you all of one thing. I will continue with President Trump to fight for everybody's First Amendment right to speak. Everybody's a right to defend themselves when they are wrongfully accused and to be able to say, I didn't do it. And to double and triple and quadruple down and say, this is wrong. This is wrong. But we are in the state of New York. We are in a New York jury, and that is why we are seeing these witch hunts, these hoaxes, as he calls them. And this is another one of them. Be brought in New York, in states where they know they will get juries like this. Here's Roberta Kaplan describing Donald Trump's behavior of having such contempt for authority, contempt for the court. Play this, play this clip. You're obviously very experienced. What was this whole experience in the courtroom like? I, I've been to, in a lot of courtrooms in my time, especially in New York City, and I've seen a lot of judges. I have never seen a party be so openly contemptuous of the authority of the court and the authority of our justice system and the legitimacy of our justice system as Donald Trump. And I think the best thing of today, other than the vindication that Eugene Carroll so deserved, is that today was a good day for our system of justice. Today was a day that showed that the rule of law applies to everyone. Even if you don't think the rule of law applies to you, it applies to you and apply today to Donald Trump. And here, Roberta Kaplan talks about how horrifying it is to note that Donald Trump just couldn't stop. He just keeps on engaging in this conduct. Here, play the clip. Our whole case was about the fact that Donald Trump is unable to follow the law, unable to follow the rules. He thinks they don't apply to him. And as bad as what he did to Eugene Carroll was, and the sexual assault was terrible, and as horrifying as the defama defamation was back in 2019, the most amazing, shocking part of it all is that he kept on doing it. And he kept on doing it even during the trial. I mean, what other person thinks they can just openly break the law over and over and over again? Donald Trump. Well, there you have it, folks. E. Jean Carroll finally speaking out, showing how powerless, how weak, what a loser Donald Trump is. $83.3 million verdict against Donald Trump. And I uh, anticipate very shortly we'll be learning about somewhere between a $370 million to $500 million verdict against Donald Trump in the New York Attorney General's civil fraud case uh, against him. We'll see what Justice Arthur Ngoron does there. Um, really good to see E. Jean Carroll speaking out, though, um, taking her power back against her abuser, uh, Donald Trump. And apparently what MAGA is trying to run on now, one of Donald Trump and kind of the MAGA uh, campaigning issues is that it was a sexual assault and not a rape is what uh, they're saying. But as Judge Lewis Kaplan has made clear Donald Trump's conduct was that he was found liable for was a rape of E. Jean Carroll. And now Donald Trump has been found uh, liable in May for defamation and now awarded uh, E. Jean Carroll being awarded $83.3 million. We'll keep you posted. With more here on the Midas Touch Network, I'm Ben Micellis. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 3 million subscribers thanks to your support. Have a good one. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.